Hello and welcome, my name is Shadow Retro and I am here to cover Nova with the changes she got with this update. So, first of all I will be covering what Nova is all about, how her abilities work and what has changed about them. I have two builds I will also show off in this video and there are timestamps in the description for all of that so if you don't want to watch the whole video through, go to the timestamps and just go ahead to whatever parts of the video interest you. But let's get started with um, some background information about Nova. So Nova was already a really good Warframe, mostly because her fill-off ability is actually very powerful. However, her other abilities were definitely outdated, and there wasn't a lot of consistency around her kit, and this light rework is what DE is calling it, has definitely made her a better Warframe. She was already really good, but now she's like that extra bit better. Her abilities are all themed after like, kind of, theoretical astrophysics kind of vibes. like. You'll know more what I mean when we actually get into the abilities, but she has like, kind of like a antimatter wormhole, which are literally names of some of her abilities kind of vibes to her. Um, a part of this rework is however though that she, all of her abilities now do blast damage. And she never used to have that before. Her fourth did blast, but she had a mix of um, damage types across all of her abilities. Since she, all of her abilities now do blast, however, she is actually our only and first blast themed or blast centric warframe in the game which is very cool so let's get into her and now let's talk about her passive so her passive is entirely different to what it used to be she used to um inflict some knockback damage i think it also did blast when she got knocked down um but now it is completely different so now what it does is when enemies are slowed it, you though and you so killing slowed enemies will have a 50 percent chance increased chance to drop health orbs and killing sped up enemies will have a 50% chance um, of dropping energy orbs. So that's what her new passive is, and obviously that synergizes with one of her abilities. Her first ability is called Null Star. So Null Star will summon 12 orbs around Nova, and each orb will give her a 5% damage reduction. The orbs will also, one by one, launch at enemies with a one second cooldown, um, dealing blast damage with a guaranteed status effect. Now, the amount of orbs that you actually have does scales of duration. So increasing your duration will increase the amount of orbs you have from um, 12 FAs. The DR of this ability, so the amount of damage reduction you get per um, orb, scales off ability strength. And obviously the range of finding an enemy to target and then launch from Nova to hit that enemy scales off range. The DR is capped at 90%. So what has changed about this ability? So anyone who already knows Nova will already have noticed some of the changes. But the big ones are the amount of orbs you get is actually doubled now. So originally at base duration, it was only six. Uh, six. Also the amount of orbs you need, um, the amount of DR you got from each orb did not scale off power strength originally. So you would have needed 18 orbs um, with the 5% DR to get the max the damage reduction from the ability, which is 90%. Um, but now, since we have, since we can scale, um, increase the amount of damage reduction we get from each orb, the amount of orbs we actually need from duration varies depending on the strength, so it's a lot more flexible. Um, the DR also only worked for health previously, so it was like armor previously, it only gave damage reduction for health, but now it also gives damage reduction for shields as well. I don't think it does for Overguard, it would be weird if it did because nothing else does, um, but it does for shields, which is much better improved. Uh, also, you can now recast the ability. You never used to be able to do that. And recasting the ability will simply just take, um, give you the max amount of orbs you have, um, can have based on your modded duration and whatnot back. This is um, Nova's helmet ability and the helmet version of it has been changed um, due to the changes that the ability got. So now the DR for the helmet ability is only capped at 75%, just like Eclipse's helmet version is, so um, I actually guessed this would happen because I don't think the improved, since Eclipse and um, Null Star are the only damage reduction abilities in the helmet, and I didn't think they would be out, would allow us to have a 90% DR from the helmet um, from Null Star, if, especially since they don't from Eclipse. So it makes sense that this got capped at 75% just like Eclipse. The augment for this ability will allow you to recast the orbs, just um, but Instead of just increasing your orbs back to the maximum you can have, it will send off the remaining orbs you didn't 
use or uh, didn't fly off uh, and, and attack an enemy, it will send off all the Romanian orbs in one hit, targeting enemies and also loot boxes and stuff like that, dealing heat damage and heat status. So you can apply a second damage time with the augment as well. Her second ability is called Antimatter Drop. So Antimatter Drop will create a ball that will kind of float around and stay in your line of sight. You will be able to shoot that ball and it will increase the dem and it will store off the damage that you pump into it. When it hits contact with the surface, it will then explode, dealing all the stored damage multiplied as blast damage with 100% status chance. The changes to this ability is now it's a lot easier to see, so the actual orb itself is bigger. It also lingers in your line of sight more, so when you move your camera, it will follow you where you actually are looking. And you can now recast the ability while it's activated to make it fly very quickly in the direction of where you're aiming. So you have a lot more control over it. So you can kind of activate it, prime it, and then immediately send it off flying and kill enemies. The augment for this ability will make it so that enemy bullets will be absorbed by it to increase its damage within 5 meters. And the range of the absorption does scale off range. Nova's third ability is called Wormhole. Wormhole will create, well, a wormhole that you can walk through to teleport to the location which is symbolized by a straight line pointing at where you will end up. Wormhole has an infinite duration but it does have a limited uses. It can only be used four times and it will show how many uses it has remaining at the top of it. The changes that this ability has had is it used to have a duration as well as the limited uses. So now it just says the limited uses. And it, damn, that's an interesting word to say. And it also never used to show how much, how many remaining uses it has, um, which now it does. The open for this ability will give you a 50% movement speed buff after teleporting through the worm, wormhole um, for seven seconds. But the movement speed buff does not scale off strength. Her fourth ability and the star of the show is called Molecular Prime. It creates a field around Nova that will spread at a speed of 5 meters per second for 6 seconds. Because of this, the range of the ability actually scales off duration. That's because it will increase how long it spreads, thus increasing how far it spreads. Enemies touched by the beam will be primed. Primed enemies will take 100% more damage from more sources and that the extra damage they receive does not scale off power strength. When prime enemies die, they will explode, dealing blast damage within a range, which does scale up our ability range, with a 20% status chance. Enemies that are primed will also have their movement speed change, depending on how you cast the ability by 50%. And the um, buff to enemies' movement speed or debuffed enemies' movement speed caps out at 75%. So by tap casting the ability, the enemies will be slowed, and by hold casting the ability, the enemies will be sped up. Obviously, this synergizes with Nervous Passive. The enemies that are slowed will give extra health orbs. The enemies that are sped up will give extra energy orbs. The changes to this ability is that it never used to be a tap hold. You, you were able to get the slow and the sped up effects, but the sped up version of this ability was originally a bug. Um, and the way you had to have make it work was to mod for negative strength. But now you can have positive strength um, and you simply just hold the ability and you can have both the speed and the slow in the same build. Additionally, the extra damage that this ability um, did that, that enemies would take that are affected by the ability used to only work on health. Now it works on health and um, shields and overguard in addition to health, which makes it a lot better when in, like, increasing the damage output of your setup. And that's pretty much it. Um, the augment for this ability will make it so that killing primed enemies will restore one of Northstar's orbs with a chance to restore a second orb depending on the rank of the mod. At, when the mod is maxed ranked, it will be a 100% chance, so you'll get two orb restores, and the chance for the second orb does not scale off strength. Additionally, and this is new with the um, her light rework, enemies hit by Northstar with the augment will be primed. So my first build is your stock standard typical speed bar slash slow bar build. Basically the idea is that you want to prime enemies to either speed them up or slow them down depending on your circumstances. Um, and then prime enemies will obviously explode spreading more damage outwards and also they will take more damage from sources as well which is very nice. I've paired this setup with a AoE weapon. The weapon of your choice is completely up to yours. You, you can do whatever you want, but I am using the Cooper Bramar just because I enjoy it. You don't actually have to use an AOE weapon either. You can do any weapon you want, um, entirely up to you. 
I am using Resonator, which is Octavia's helmet ability, as the helmet for this setup, because while speed for speeding up enemies won't really be an issue in most game modes, speeding up enemies does also mean they shoot faster. And that can mean killing the payload in defense missions faster. And Speedva is the best Warframe, the meta Warframe when dealing with defense missions because it makes the whole experience faster by speeding up enemies. So you really do want Resonator for defense missions because you'll have that level of crowd control to make sure the defense target actually stays alive. But Resonator won't be needed for normal um, setups. Um, because you won't need it for survivability on your own. My other build also speeds up enemies and doesn't use the resonator, so I know you won't need it for survivability. Um, so if you weren't going to use Speedva for um, defense missions, or if you wanted to make two builds, the other option for a helmet would probably be either Raw, if you had a damage over time setup on your weapon, which I do, so I would use Raw, or Zatas Whisper if you were going for a Raw damage setup on your helmet. Raw probably still could be better for raw damage though because it will also increase the damage of Molecular Prime's explosions. So why would you choose speed or slow when it comes down to picking which option? So slow really depends on the circumstance of what build you're, what um, mission you're doing as there are a few missions where you want to slow down enemies for the crowd control purposes. The one that really stands out to me is Interception. You want to slow down enemies in that one, but you could definitely argue that there's a few missions in that case. Any mission where you don't really want to protect um, a payload, like maybe excavation would be another one, or like kind of slow down enemies for that reason, though you definitely want to be using the speed variant of this, because by speeding up enemies, it means they will go from their spawn to where you are faster, um, meaning you'll kill them faster. So speed var will increase your KPM while slow will lower it. So if you are doing any sort of mission where a KPM matters, like especially survival, you definitely want to use speed. If you're doing a mission where you care more about crowd control than actual KPM, um, like interception, then you definitely want slow. For my version of the build, because I'm normally running survival missions and other stuff like that, I normally want to use speed instead of slow. I do have the inverted tap hole setting on Nova. That means when I tap the ability, I get the speed effect instead of the slow effect. I would recommend doing the same if you were going to use the speed variant of this ability a lot more than the slow. But if you were going to use the slow variant more, then don't do that because you'll you'll have the tap on the slow one. Basically, what I mean is make sure the tap um, is doing the effect that you want to cast the most, so you don't have to hold base um, and just make it more friendly to play and nice to the feel feeling while playing. Okay, let's get into the actual Nova build. Ignore how it says Speedva and Slova up the top. Um, they were for my old setups. I just haven't changed the names of the loadouts yet. So I am doing a shield tank setup with Nova. This is so I don't have to worry about healing because shield regens passively by itself. Well, health does not. Um, and for shield taking, we do have prime redirection, fast deflection, and adaptation. Adaptation for the damage, um, damage reduction, obviously. Scare, um, stacking with Null Star, so we'll have that 99% damage reduction. We'll actually have 99.5 because shields have an inherent 50% damage reduction as well. Um, fast speed reflection will increase the recharge rate of our shields and also decrease the delay, which is crucial for any shield tank setup that doesn't have an instant shield restore like Mag's Fork or Pillage or um, Harris for something like that. And then obviously Prime Redirection so we can increase our shields. She has very little shields and health at base, so you definitely want Prime Redirection to increase it. Normal Redirection doesn't give her as much for buff, so if you don't have Prime Redirection, I would probably recommend just going for a health tank build instead. For a health tank build, you can simply just swap out um, Prime Redirection with Vital, swap out Mold Efficiency with Arcane Blessing, and you could actually have a free mod slot here. You could put on anything. But I used um, shields just for the flexibility of not needing to worry about healing myself. Then I do have the molecular fissure augment, which is the augment for a fourth ability that will increase, uh, give me back stacks of my null star so I don't have to recast the ability. And it will even prime new enemies um, when null star goes off and trigger attacks enemies as well, which is very cool. We do have stretch, as stretch will increase the explosion range of molecular prime explosion on enemies which means more enemies will get hit by the explosion sensor on enemies dealing more damage overall. And then we have a bit of strength. The amount of Nova doesn't really need a lot of strength. She only needs 
150% strength to max out either the slow or the speed increase. As you can see, my slow slash speed increase is 72%, which is very close to max because the max is 75%. I don't care enough to get maxed out, but if you wanted to max it out, you could be add an arc, a red Archon Charge, just one red Archon Charge would do it, and you'd get maxed out, and you'd be very fun. Additionally, I am not running Casting Speed Shards on Nova, though I probably should, because her fourth ability is slow. It gives iframes, though, when you cast it, so I don't care that much, but a slow casting ability does still slow your KPM. Um, so for the best setup, I would recommend putting on casting speed. I will probably do it at one point. I just haven't done it yet. Um, mostly because I don't have any um, Emerald Shards lying around right now. And then obviously we do have Primed Flow for the energy regen along with Arcane Energize. We do get that extra energy drop chance from her passive, but we still want Energize and Primed Flow just so we can keep up our energy economy and make sure it works well. And then Prime Continuity for to increase the range of our fourth ability and also the DR from our first ability. Speaking of our first ability, with Prime Continuity, we do have 18 animated drops. Uh, we do have 18 of the particles from Null Star, which is enough even at base power strength to give us the 90% DR. But thanks to our strength, you can see we actually get 7% DR from each particle, so we're getting more than enough um, DR so we can actually lose quite a few of our particles before we actually start to lose damage reduction from uh, this ability. Especially because we're also running multi efficiency which will give us a further 30%, 36% ability duration as long as our shields are active and this is a shield tank setup so they will be active um, which will further increase the duration, further increase the range of our fourth ability and further increase the amount of particles we get from Null Star. As I said, I am using a old Kuva Brahma build for the weapon of this build. You can run whatever weapon you want. Kuva Brahma by no means is a top tier weapon anymore. There are much better weapons now, um, but it's definitely still very fun to play around with. It is one of my favorite weapons in the game. And I know a lot of people get worried about Kuva Brahma's low ammo capacity. If you're running an enemy mutation mod, which you need to run, you shouldn't have any issues. If you don't believe me, watch the gameplay footage you've been seeing the entire time. You'll rarely see my ammo count drop below five. Yes, the setup is a very standard typical viral slash setup using Hunter Munitions. I do have an inherent toxic through the Kuva system, and then we get our coal to make viral from prime cryo rounds, and then we get slash obviously from Hunter Munitions. Primo Merciless is where we get our base damage from. We do have the newer rifle elementalist to increase the damage our slash does. A, pr a maxed ranked prime faction mod will be better than a rifle and lance list. However, with a max ranked primed faction mod, you have to change out the mod depending when you change factions. Elementalist, you don't make it a bit more flexible. Siri just interrupted me. Making a bit more flexible so I don't have to constantly change it. And also, a max ranked not primed faction mod is actually worse than elementalist anyway. Brand Flam Sword will increase the radius of the Cooper Bramus explosions, making it deal more damage, obviously. And then we have our crit chance, crit damage, fire rate, and multi shot. For this setup, since we are doing a health a shield tank setup, I opted to go for my crowd control Bobby Leo. He has Guardian on him, meaning when my shields get break, they will be fully restored once, and then the ability will go on cooldown. And if the ability stays off cooldown, then I'll completely always restore my shields. Repo Audit is Loki's fourth ability. It will disarm enemies in a wild range. And then Menifold Bond will apply the status effects from my Hound's weapon onto enemies. And if I have Radiation on it, which I do, I suddenly have Loki's fourth ability with its augment as a companion. Yep. Then we have Synth Deconstruct, which will increase the health, drop ch health orb drop chance on enemies that are tagged by our companion. This, um, synth, I'm not going to pronounce that mod's name, but this mod basically just spreads electricity status effects across the map, stunning enemies, adding some more status effects for priming, which we don't really need for the setup. Um, but it stuns enemies, giving us some more crowd control. Evasion Denial is for the Hound survivability, along with Link Redirection and Link Vital. Momentum Spawn will give us an extra element for our companion, increasing its priming capacity each time we kill an Eximus. But also, when it goes down, when we kill an Eximus unit, it will lower the, the cooldown on the revival by 18 seconds, so it also helps out with the companion's survivability. And then obviously, Vacuum is a must-have mod. And then for the weapon for the companion, I don't actually have it set up properly to do damage or anything like that. I'm simply just added the elements that I want the weapon, the enemy, to prime with, and we have 
viral heat and radiation. Radiation for crowd control, heat for some more crowd control and some armor reduction and viral for that extra damage to your enemy's health as well, which will increase our damage output. For the utility weapons, run whatever secondary you want. I recommend running Amalgam Barrel Diffusion though for the um, increased rolling speed. I would also recommend running both Orca mods, Orca Seeker and Orca um, Pact because you'll get that energy to shield conversion on custom ability. And if your shields do go fully down, while well, you'll get like close to a two second, if not a two second um, shield gate with the amount of shields on this build, you'll still have a like a 2.2 second cooldown on the delay rate, I believe, if going from fully um, depleted. Um, so casting an ability to jumpstart your shields will lower that um, delay rate as the delay rate is a lot less when going from having shields compared to going from completely depleted. Completely depleted delay rate is four seconds while having shields the delay rate is only one second. So you definitely want that energy to shield conversion to kind of jumpstart your shields. And then we have Paredos for our, this evolution right here giving us sprint speed and slide and this evolution right here giving us parkour velocity. Do not underestimate how much better the game feels when you have these movement speed buffs from mods like Amalgam Barrel Diffusion um, and also these two evolutions from Brevis. The focus skill is entirely up to you. The only real one I wouldn't use is Naramon, unless you're using a quick attack melee build for this setup, which you totally could, in which case you want 100% want Naramon. Besides that though, if you wanted some power strength and casting speed, then I would go with Matarai. If you wanted knockback resistance and armor strip, Yunaru is your option. Vazirin will give you grouping and also some survivability. And Xenoric obviously does give you some power strength as well as energy economy buffs. And I totally forgot to mention, but this build needs, 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 needs prime sure footed if you're going to use an AoE weapon like I am, because if you don't have it, you will knock yourself back. You either have prime sure footed or you use Yunaru basically. If you're not using an AoE weapon, it doesn't matter as much. You will still be knocked back, which is a big issue. It will lower your KPM, your DPS, and lower your survivability, but isn't as big of an issue. Um, because Molecular Prime's explosions won't knock you back. At least I don't think they do from them. The second build is a build that uses Anti-Mana Drop as our main DPS tool. We buff Anti-Mana Drop by using the Helmet ability Roar, and also we will prime enemies with our fourth ability, increasing the damage they take. Roar is a very powerful helmet ability for the setup because Roar will increase our weapon's damage, which will, of course, increase Antimatter's damage. And Roar will then separately increase Antimatter's damage as Roar also increases our ability damage. For the build, I am using the Felix as my weapon of choice. That's because it is a very high um, raw damage output weapon. It um, doesn't have any specific synergies that make it very good with Antimatter Drop. But the Antimatter Drop just takes the raw damage of your weapon and then applies it to the damage it does. So status of its, damage over time builds obviously won't work very well. You want to just pump it full of damage, um, a lot of raw damage. I also don't think actual damage types matter as much either, because I don't think they'll gain the bonus of attacking the enemy. Um, and and there are also a lot of few things that um, make us to build this weapon a bit differently to how I, you would probably normally build a weapon, which I'll talk about when we actually get to the weapon build. For the Nova build, we do have a health tank build this time. I wanted to make a short tank build again, but I did not have the mod slots for it, so I went on for a health tank setup instead. The reason why shield tanking is just better if you can have it instead of health tanking is again, you don't have to worry about finding a source to kill you with. And you have the shield gate. You have that survive that extra survivability stance, right? But with the health tank build, I did go for vitality just to give me that extra health, along with arcane blessing to give me a lot of extra health. So I'll end up with above 1,800 health. And then of course adaptation for the 99% DR. We actually do get more DR than that from armor, but I'm not from armor as our army gives us 31% DR. So we actually have 99.31 percent damage reduction from our health which is less than what we have in our shields but still good. Equilibrium will be used for this build for um, the health purposes as we will be summoning a lot of energy orbs thanks to our passive as we will be using the speed bar setup and those energy orbs will be converted into health which gives us a lot of health regen so that's Equilibrium is basically you being used as our health source um, healing source and also equilibrium is being used for energy as well as this ability is a bit more taxing on our energy uses. Stretch will increase the range of antimatter's explosion, so it will increase the amount of damage it does basically as more enemies will be hit by it. 
Um, then we do have Prime Continuity and a bit of Strength. Strength will increase Anti-Mana's ability. Um, damage, but it will not increase the amount of damage the, the amount of damage it absorbs, like the multiplier you see there, the eight times. So it won't increase that. Strength won't do that. But we also do use strength to increase the amount of damage reduction we get for, per particle alongside primed continuity for just to make sure we keep that damage reduction from null star up as much as possible. And then we do have molecular fusion again, as we will be priming enemies still, so we will be using molecular fusion to again make null star easy to keep up and maintain. Prime flow and arcane energizer are of course used for energy economy. So here's the build that we are looking at. So we are using primed point blank for base damage. This is because I don't want to go around priming, proccing the acolyte arcanes, any of the acolyte arcanes. So I'm using primed point blank for our base damage. And then we have factorized reset to increase our reload speed for the weapon as well to make it just a lot easier to reload as this weapon has a notoriously bad reload speed. I am actually unsure now that I think about it if the faction damage would apply to the damage that is absorbed by anti matter drop, but I would add a faction mod anyway, just in case you want to use the weapon against an enemy, as it will increase that damage. Tactical prop, obviously for the reload speed, again this weapon has atrocious reload speed. Um, even more base damage, um, even multi-shot paired with Hell's Chamber. I am not using Galvanized Chamber because I'm not killing enemies with um, Felix itself, so I'm not actually proccing the extra multi shot you get from Galvanized Chamber. So, Hell's Chamber is actually a better buff, and then we're pairing that with Vigil Augmented even more. And then we have some elements to increase the damage it does. I don't think the type of element matters because, again, you're not actually attacking enemies with this weapon, you're attacking animated drop. But adding elemental damage will still increase the damage overall, so it'll just deal more damage anyway. For the companion, we are using the Pants of Opifila because of this mod right here. This mod gives you a health gate. It will store up some health whenever you kill enemies, and then when you die, when you should die and take lethal damage, it will heal you based on the amount of health it's stored up, and instead it will um, down, it, our companion will down itself, which is basically the cooldown for this mod. But this gives us a health gate, so I like to use this on all my health tank setups because that gives me a gate mechanic which I miss out um, when I'm using health gate in setups. Barrow Quills will increase. Barrow Quills and Panzer Devolution will increase. Will have our Panzer Profiler spread viral across the map, obviously increasing our damage output. And Panzer Devolution will lower its respawn timer from 60 seconds to 30 seconds. Pack Leader, I'm not using really on this build, but I do use it on other builds and I recycle companion builds. The point there is though to heal the companion on melee hit. Again, I'm not using melee for this build, so it's not really being made use here. Tendon Bond also isn't being, Tendon Bond and Tenacious Bond aren't also being used here, as I am using the evolution for Felix that increases the final, uh, um, in the damage if you don't have a crit hit. So I'm not doing crit damage, so Tenacious Bond doesn't do anything. But again, these are for other builds. Loyal Retriever will have a chance to increase our credit and resource drop pickups, because why not? Why wouldn't you have it, right? You're using a beast, why wouldn't you have this mode? And Link Vitality, obviously for the survivability of our Panzer and Fetch as a must-have. And Synth Deconstruct will increase the amount of health orb drops, while which would not only give us some healing, but also synergize well with Arcane Blessing. I don't have a proper build set up yet on the Panzer Pop Fire Claws. I do have Swipe, More, and Bite. Bite is needed for Tenacious Bond, which we aren't using here. Swipe is very good for Tendon Bond, which we also don't make use of here. And more just increases its base damage. So again, I don't have a proper setup yet for um, any of the Companions weapons, or the new weapons, but I will farm up the new mods. As you can see, I don't really have a lot. I will farm up the new mods and eventually get some good builds going for them. For the utility weapons, basically exactly the same as what I said for the first setup. So if you want to know about the utility setups, just go to build one utility setups. It's the exact same information. And for the focus school, once again, if you want to know what focus school to pick, exactly the same as build one. So just if you didn't watch it, go to the build one timestamp and watch the focus school explanation because it's the same thing and I don't want to repeat myself. And that is all I have for today on Nova. So you got two builds today. I do hope you enjoyed both of them. And I hope you check out some of my other builds. I just, just uploaded a Caliban video that is doing quite well. Um, and so check that out if you're interested in Caliban's new kit and his new rework, which the video obviously covers. And I will um, hopefully pretty soon be releasing a video for Komi as well for her new, the new Warframe. And I will also be showing off one of the new melee galvanized mods in that same video. So until next time, bye bye.